Joining me now for Washington is Clifford May, president of the Foundation for Defenses of Democracies and Foreign Affairs, columnist for the Washington Times. Thanks so much for joining us. First of all, the Egyptian proposal was embraced by Israel as well as the U.S., the Arab League and the Palestinian Authority. So explain to us what the proposal involved. Well, it's a ceasefire. It didn't involve much. It essentially said, you don't fire against us, we won't fire against uh, you. The Israelis, as I understand it, had accepted it at, as of 9 a.m. this morning at their time. They waited till 3 p.m., and at that point, almost 50 rockets had been fired during the day. And they said, I guess the, uh, I guess the Hamas decision is not to have a, a ceasefire with no other conditions, so we'll go back to, uh, to, to reprisals. And uh, now you have an exchange of fire again. And Israel, this will last, we don't know how long. Yeah, Israel accepted the Egyptian initiative, but the unilateral ceasefire fell apart as, a, as the rockets from Gaza continued to fly into Israel. So Hamas says they will continue to bombard until their conditions are met. What are those conditions? They have a whole long list of conditions. They want prisoners released. They want uh, Egypt to open up various border crossings. Um, they have a whole list of conditions. Uh, it's very hard to see why they would believe that Israel or Egypt or anyone else would say, you're right, we will make concessions to you in order to get you to stop firing missiles at Israel. Um, Israel has been doing very well with their Iron Dome anti-missile defense system in knocking out the worst missiles. And as a result, Israelis have not been killed. I was there a few days ago. You can hear the sirens. If you're in the right place, you can see the missiles coming. But you also see the Iron Dome anti-missile missiles uh, taking those missiles out and knocking them and exploding them in the air. Uh, what Hamas is thinking is very hard to see. Maybe they think if they have more casualties, they'll get more sympathy from the international community. Um, but why they think they have the power to say, we will stop only if you make concessions to us, we will make no concessions to you, this is a bit of a mystery right now. Even the Palestinian Authority, Mahmoud Abbas, the president of that, has been urging them to take the offer on the table and to stop firing missiles and accept a truce, not a peace settlement, just a truce, because Hamas is, Hamas is getting hurt and people in Gaza who may not want this are getting hurt, and they're getting hurt worse than, than the Israelis are. There should be no question about that. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry accuses Hamas of playing politics. What is he referring to? Well, I'm not sure he knows what he's referring. I mean, he's referring to them essentially pretending that they have the, the leverage to make demands of Israel, to make demands of Egypt, to make demands of the Americans, um, based only on the fact that they are, being, they are being hit in response to the rockets they're launching. Uh, they have a lot of rockets. They have a lot of Iranian-manufactured rockets, more sophisticated rockets than they used to have. They can hit about 80 percent of Israel at this point, except for the Iron Dome. Um, but at a certain point, and they've got thousands of them probably, at a certain point they'll, they'll run out and resupply may be, may be difficult. I guess Kerry means that they, are, that they have some political calculation here where they think they can win this by uh, the way they normally do, which is not militarily, but within a propaganda war that portrays them as victims and uses their civilians and this, their civilian victims, again, to, to, to gain sympathy. What should the international community be doing at this point? Demanding that Hamas stop firing missiles at the Israelis. Uh, it's, uh, every, uh, anything else is very hard, to, is, is not going to be very useful at this point. And it's also important to recognize the extent to which what Hamas is doing makes the possibility of a real settlement of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict almost impossible. Gaza is about 50 miles from Israel's only important international airport, Ben Gurion. They are lobbing missiles at Ben Gurion Airport. If Israel were to pull all of its troops out of the West Bank, that would may mean that missiles could be fired by Hamas, assuming it would be there, from five miles away. That would be, that, that it, I, I do not see how the Israelis can think about that. Hamas is, a, is very much a detriment to peace. It's a Muslim Brotherhood organization. It's a terrorist organization. It is recognized internationally as such. It is a jihadist organization. One thing that strikes me is that with all the, 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 the march of jihadism going on in Syria and Iraq and other places, perhaps Hamas feels that it can't sit back in a truce it has to show that it is fighting um, and that it is part of this, this struggle. If so, it is doing tremendous damage to itself, to people in Gaza, and to 
the Palestinian cause in, in any intelligent way that it might be interpreted. All right, Clifford May, president of the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies. Always a pleasure to have you on the program. Thanks so much for this.